Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tank Fishing Talk Show brought to you by Bass Fishing Network Live and proudly sponsored by Bass Bully Nation, Lure Lock, Line Serum. Make sure you all go check them out on Facebook and Instagram. They make some great apparel, great tackle boxes, and great line condition. Today's special guest is Mr. YouTuber Spencer Kenny. How you doing tonight, man? Doing good. What's up? Uh, when did you know you wanted to do YouTube? Well, I had started watching YouTube videos a few years ago, and then um, I think about last year, uh, last October, you know, I really started watching a lot of saltwater videos, and I seen some of the fish these guys were catching, and I was like, I'm catching more fish than that. You know, and they would be saying things in their videos where, you know, I'm not going to say any names of people, but some of the things that they would say, I could tell I'm more knowledgeable when it comes to, you know, some of the stuff they were talking about. I'm like, why ain't I doing this? So that's whenever I decided to just go out and I said, I'm going to do it. What was your favorite YouTubers to watch then? Or can you <laughs> name a few? Black Tip H, number one. Really? Yep. He, he's got some good videos. Do you, have you ever been saltwater fishing? Oh, yeah. Um, my channel started off saltwater fishing videos, so I guess saltwater fishing is a harder genre. And um, I, I was primarily saltwater fishing, and then I would go freshwater fishing when the weather was bad and I couldn't get offshore. And then some of my bass videos started taking off, so I started hammering the bass videos to try to you know, make my channel blow up, and it's been working. But, yes, Do you I like – I have Go an ahead. offshore boat. I have an offshore boat. I have an inshore boat, which I'll probably be selling soon because I don't do much inshore fishing. Um, offshore fishing is where it's at for me. You know, big amberjack, cobia, you know, big fish right. get my drilling pumping. Do you like filming freshwater videos or saltwater videos more? That has changed recently. So um, I did, I was really big into offshore fishing and, you know, the big cobia and all that stuff, but. Offshore fishing costs a lot of money. You know, I spend two hundred dollars a trip in gas and tackle at least because I live an hour and a half from the coast. So, bass fishing is a lot more challenging, um, considering you know you're targeting one species with artificial lures. You know, it can be a lot more challenging. It's kind of like if you were doing saltwater fishing and you said, "I'm going to go out today and catch nothing but a tarpon." And you're going to target that tarpon all day long. But most people don't do that when they go saltwater fishing. You know, they target the whole ocean. But recently, I would say bass fishing um, would be – I've been getting more into bass fishing because it's cheap. For me, I can go out my back door and go bass fishing, and it's always exciting. Whenever you're in a public place and you pull a nine-pounder out, can't beat that. What's your favorite saltwater fish to catch? That I have caught, well, that I've hooked. I haven't actually, well, I've caught amberjack, but I haven't actually landed a big amberjack. I've caught a bunch of small ones. But I'd say either uh, the biggest, the, my most favorite thing I've hooked <clears throat> into is probably an amberjack or either a cobia. Have you ever, uh, have you ever tr uh, fished for swordfish or? I have not. I have not done any billfish. I want to. For sure. Yeah, that seems gotta, pretty fun. I've watched some videos on that. That seems a lot of fun. Got to have that money. Those, those, yep, uh, for sure. Those guides you're talking, I mean, I think I heard some of them are like 10 grand for a trip. That's outrageous. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your favorite type of videos to film when, when you're fishing? You know, what do you, what is your favorite to do? Absolutely. Well, I also have a vlogging channel as well, um, which I haven't really been pushing it, where I just do vlogs, random stuff, but it's not really enjoyable to me. So the fishing videos are enjoy enjoyable and really just make, turning the camera on. So when I go out, I try to make a timeline of like, hey, I'm going to do the intro here and I'm going to you know, talk here. But sometimes I just forget and I just like let fishing take over. I just make sure the camera is recording. And then I just come back and make up with me being a host where I forgot to talk here, make that up later, and then, you know, make it up in the editing and make it all come together at the end. Do you be more entertaining for yourself or being more entertaining fishing? Which is more important for you when filming a video? Being more entertaining for myself? Well, I can say... 
I went fishing the other night and I didn't even film because we were just catching catfish. So I still, I fish for fun, you know, whether I have the camera on or not. Now, 90% of the time, if that camera and that battery's charged and I got it with me, I've got it running because something crazy might happen and I might catch a 12 pound bass. Right. But even if the camera dies, I'm not just going to say, I'm, I'm done fishing for the day. You know, I'm still going to fish. So it's more important right. that I'm having a good time and I'm enjoying it. And if I'm not enjoying it, then I'm probably not even going to make the video to show people. Right. Dwayne, you want to go ahead and ask him some questions? How much work goes into a 10 or 15 minute long video? <laughs> a lot. So, but that question um, is very vague. So let's say if you just want to do a raw vlog style video and not add any fancy sound effects, no music, um, you just wanted to film the actual parts with you catching fish or you talking, you yeah. could probably clip that together in about an hour, you know, adding no music, no special effects, none of that stuff. Now, when you get into making B-roll, do you know what B-roll is? Yeah, I, okay. I was about to I've seen, I watched quite a few of your videos last night, and you have really good B-roll, you have really good music, you have a good intro. So one of the videos that stuck out in my head was when you and your buddy went out and it was fall and you caught two or three giant, you know, six, seven pounders. Mm -hmm. I think you uploaded it a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. it, how long does it take you to put, to get everything you need taped for it, put it together, and get it out i would say probably about eight to 16 hours um sometimes i'll i'll watch that video over and over again so once i think i have it done i'll watch it over again and then i'll see something that i need to go back and fix and then i'll do it again and i've because i've made the mistake before of having a, a really good video that has potential of getting hundred thousand views upload it without doing that last recap and then once it's live somebody will be like oh man you know this right here and i've had to take that video back down once it already had you know 500 views so you said you started out saltwater and you're saying you've only been in it for a year how long did it take you to build up to 5,000? is that why you added fresh water to bump your subs up okay so at first i was doing if you go back and look at the timeline of my videos at first, um, I was doing primarily saltwater, and then I would go bass fishing whenever the weather wasn't right or I didn't have the money to get to the coast to go saltwater fishing. Yeah. So then I think it was like last Christmas, I was just doing some saltwater or doing some bass fishing before Christmas at the pond, and I caught like a 10.9 pounder with live bait. Well, after I hit a thousand subscribers, um, which was about three months ago, I think that video got started getting suggested with the, the bass video. And so I started getting all these subscribers because that video got 125,000 views. And I got like up the bumped up to 3000 subscribers off of that on all these subscribers are subscribing because they want to see bass fishing. Yeah. So that kind of pigeonholed me into bass fishing, you know, because now I upload a saltwater video and I mean, they watch it, but those guys are subscribing because they want to see bass videos. So it kind of it kind of turned me my channel more narrated towards bass fishing. Which, so you're you're in South Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. What are your water temps like there right now? 50, 56, 58. Um, I haven't seen it higher than fifty nine in anywhere I've been. What are you throwing to catch them on this time of year? Right now we've been killing them with uh, rattle traps. So there's a public lake here. It's called Grassy Pond where we were going out, um, I went three days in a row and I haven't uploaded these videos yet. I'm backlogged right now. I've got 15 videos I need to upload. I probably go fishing three to four times a week and then I edit my videos at work whenever I have time. But anyways, this day we were out fishing and I, I bet I caught about caught 12 bass the first day. So we had a two man limit. The second day I caught 20 and then the third day I think we caught four and one was five pounds. Um, caught all those with the Spro um it's a spro crankbait it's got a flat side on it but it doesn't have little john wheel. spro little john little john md yep that thing is awesome it's got that circuit bill lip can't yep. beat it yep now it let me ask you this and i know he touched on editing and that's a really good point have you yep. ever filmed a video that personally you thought it was amazing but you got to where you was editing it and you just had to 
throw it away? No, because let me tell you why. There's been videos that I have never thought they would get views, and I thought they absolutely suck. But people think that it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Vice versa. Kind of weird, huh? It is because you don't know what the what the, you have what your preference, but you don't know what other people's preference is. So, the rule I would say to that is, upload it and don't worry about it. Move on to the next one. What's your number one way you promote videos like that? When you uh, think they're not going to do anything and you're just throwing it out there, do you promote it or just leave it alone? Well, I have some that I haven't really promoted. So generally, if I think a video is good, I'd promote it pretty hard on all these Facebook groups. I promote it on Reddit. I promote it on Twitter. You know, I post it everywhere I possibly can. But there has been some where I just don't really feel like it's going to – it's worth me taking the time to promote it. And I just throw it on YouTube. I might share it to my Facebook, and then I just leave it alone. Have you seen an increase from doing that with videos you think were no good or did it really matter? Well, uploading any kind of content, um, the more you upload, the more chances you have of the algorithm grabbing that video, one of them taking off. So there's a saying it's called, I'm not going to say it. I don't know how, how you guys do the language and what kind of people you have watching, but I'll say the nice version, throw enough crap at the wall until something sticks. And there's there's some of these youtubers out here which you can go look at them um you know they'll have one one guy for reference i'm not gonna say his name but he uploaded a video a year for 365 days he doesn't really have great editing skills um he, he's you know he's a good host but his videos are, are like you know so par when it comes to you know fishing all that good stuff but just the fact that he had the number of videos out there and he jumped up to thirty thousand subscribers fifty thousand subscribers so the more you upload, the better it is for your channel. For so there, you're you're part of our group, so you know there's a bunch of aspiring YouTube fishermen inside our group. Yes. Uh, we are. Let's go into uh, beginner editing software. Okay. Um, beginner cameras. You know, I know everybody can't go out and buy Hero Black Seven. Yes. Uh, software. What kind of laptop you need? Just what you need for these guys to actually help their dreams come true okay so starting out I, I was one of these guys that thought i need the best camera i need i need a fifteen hundred dollar camera and because i had the money you know because i worked i went out and i bought a fifteen hundred dollar camera but i actually did my first video that got one hundred twenty five thousand views with an eighty dollar Ecaso ek 7000 off of ebay so 80, an $80 camera, and I still have that thing. And I still set it up sometimes for a second viewer camera. Now, I would not suggest the $40 action cams. I bought probably three of those when I was starting out, and every one was a piece of crap. This really poor quality and low lighting. But the Ecaso EK7000, it's the one I had specifically was blue. Um, you can get that for about 80 bucks. I would say that's a good um, action cam for your first time. Um, some YouTubers film stuff on their phone. If you know who Catch 'Em All Fishing is, you ever heard of him? Yeah. Yep. He films everything on his phone. He's just got an iPhone. He's a really good host though, and and he 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 doesn't really do a lot of editing, but he makes up for that in host. So depending on, we'll, we'll I'll get back to that in a minute. But you asked about software, it, beginner, yeah, beginning editor software. Okay. Um, when I started out, I looked up on. Google for video editor software for beginners. And I found Movavi, M-O-V-A-V-I. It's very user-friendly. It's got big buttons and stuff, um, really easy to learn. Um, you have to, you get a free trial, but the trial has a big watermark on it. Um, there are ways to not pay for it, which YouTube has all that information. I'm not saying you should go do that, but, um, it's very good for your first time use. Uh, I, I use that starting out and I use it up until probably about four months ago. And then I learned Adobe Premiere Pro because I wanted to do more advanced. And that's when my channel really started taking off. Okay. Uh, but I, let me get back to, to catch them all fishing. Um, that guy, see, YouTube, every YouTuber is different. Nothing the same is going to work for e any YouTuber. So you've got some guys that are really great hosts. They're really good at talking to the camera, being exciting, interacting with the viewers. You know, 
those guys don't have to do a whole lot of editing and music and stuff because the people just love their personality and they want to watch them. They want to listen to them. See, like with me, if you look at my channel, there's not a whole lot of me talking. You know, I'm doing more fishing. So I make up with that with my with the music to make the viewer feel, you know, like he's there and, and feel like when I set the hook, you know, so every you just got to find out you got to start out doing it and you got to keep doing stuff and find out what works for you. And when you hit something that works and you have a video that take off, you replicate that. You keep doing it just like when you're bass fishing. You just call a bass, you know, with a with a rattle trap, reeling it really slow, as slow as you can with it bumping the bottom. And then you twitched it a little bit. Right when you got that twitch, you got a bite. You do it again. You catch another one. You just keep doing that. Videos are the same way. So if you had choice of anyone, who are you wanting to collab with? <laughs> um, it, anyone in general or bass fishing or saltwater fishing or whatever. YouTube and let's keep it to bass fishing since this is bass, bass fish fishing. Truth. Um, probably the Guggen squad, not because I mean, Lunkers TV has more numbers than the Guggen squad, but I just love those guys. Guggen squad is awesome. That, I like Lake Fork it. guy and, uh, Lunkers, but the other two, I, I can't really buy into. Well, you see Lake Fork guys, a member of the Guggen squad. So when I say Guggen yeah, squad, yeah. that covers a bunch of them. Yeah. I mean, they're taking over the YouTube scene quick too. They are. They're, but, they're uh, good. we got some questions from our viewers. Okay. And uh, this one's from Richard Bill, and he asked, what do you do for a job? Um, well, I, I wish I could say YouTube, but for a job, I work at an IT company. Um, I do. I went to school for computer networking, and I work at an IT company. We do support for networking and um, VoIP phones, voice over internet. So I work in IT. You got That's another viewer question, Wyatt? What'd you say? You got another viewer question? Nope, that's it. If you want to go ahead, go ahead. Or I can go ahead, doesn't matter. What's your PB, Spencer? <laughs> PB bass, um, I would say 11 pounds. I've got it on the wall. I caught it when I was 11. I caught a 10 pounder when I was 10. I caught 11 pounder when I was 11. This thing looks like it's 14 though. We weighed it with the old spring scales. You know the spring scales? Yeah, you know, the old school scales that had the little spring in them. Yeah, we found some when I was like 12 years old or 11 years old um, in the bottom of a lake in a tackle box, and we pulled it up, and they're all rusted. So that's all we had to weigh that 11 pounder with. So it says 11 on the plaque, but it looks 14. But we're going to stick with 11 because it's a lot harder to beat a 14 pounder. And I'm going to so beat my PB this year. Are all are all your PBs from Southern Georgia? Have you ever went any other state? Uh, just for bass fishing? Um, I went to Florida uh, whenever I used to fish tournaments, um, local tournaments, when I was uh, in my early teens and before I was 10. <clears throat> and we would go to North Georgia. Uh, we go to Lake Seminole, which is on the Alabama, you know, Georgia and Florida. We go down to um, Lake Okeechobee. I've been to Lake Toho, uh, Sinclair, but I've been up to Tennessee, but not, I don't think we did any fishing while we was there it was more to visit gatlinburg so all these big fish are coming out of georgia south georgia you don't hear a lot about south georgia when you hear monster bass you hear you know northern florida all these other ones you don't hear a lot about northern or southern georgia for big bass well let me ask you this where was the world record bass caught at 22 years ago are it small mouth or large mouth? Large mouth. World record large mouth bass. Not the one that's tied, but the original world record large mouth bass. I really, I don't know. I know okay. small mouth was Dale Hollow. I don't know about the. Well, George Perry caught the 22, I think it's 22 pounds and three ounces, I believe. Is yeah, what that's it is. tied for Lake Biwa. Yep. And he caught that in Georgia. Really? Yep. On a pu on public lake? Um, it was in a river, I believe. I would have to look it up um, to speak more correctly, but I believe it was in a river, and it was with a homemade topwater plug that he made. So a around big you, there's a bunch of river systems with shoal bass in them. Georgia has about the only population of shoal bass in the United States. Do you ever do any shoal bass fishing? Eh, I'm not specifically targeting them. I'm sure I've caught some. Um, there's a swanee. Uh, a Swanee River down 
uh, just south of me that's in actually in North Florida. And we go down there to fish and there's some lakes that run off of it and we fish those lakes and we catch them every now and then. But I know I haven't never specifically targeted them. Things only get like what, five, six pounds? Yeah, they're, they're like spots. They're not very yeah. big. Um, your YouTube channel, have you told the viewers where your YouTube channel is, your YouTube ID and how to find you? My, my viewers on this show right here? On this show right here, have you let them know how to find you? Well, my YouTube name is Real Jedi. I don't know if that shows up backwards for you guys or not, but R E E L J E D I, all one word. Hey, can you guys hear me? So all you got to do is just go to YouTube and search Real Jedi. Now, if you search R E A L, like Real Jedi, you'll get a bunch of Star Wars crap. So <laughs> it's not that. You back, Wyatt? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can he hear me? Yeah, you're good. All right, we're good. Go ahead, dude. You got any more questions or viewer questions, Wyatt? Uh, nope. All uh, right, I I got questions, but are you still going? Nope. Go ahead. All uh, right. What is your all-time favorite type of video to film? All-time favorite, probably offshore fishing. Uh, do you have like? Well, I already asked you specific species, but do you have a favorite? type of year you like to go do it but the weather is nice or well um this summer is going to be great because we got some access to some new ponds um so south georgia I i've got a buddy that just come up from miami and i don't know if you guys are familiar with south florida or not but i'm sure some people in your group um come from down there there's a bunch of public lakes you can get on google maps and you can just look up oh here's a body of water i'll go fish and catch bass so this guy just come from miami to here and he's this day. This is the day I met him. It's actually in one of my videos where I was fishing at a public lake, and um, he was going to all these all these different places, and it would be like gated, you know, private property. He couldn't fish there. So then I ran into him on public lake, and I was like, dude, this isn't like South Florida. So he's always telling me like, man, let's go to here, and he's just showing me on Google Maps. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. So everywhere in South Georgia, all these places are public you got to buy a membership and it's a thousand dollars you know they got benville plantation have you guys ever heard of benville plantation yep uh, bill dance is filmed there you know a bunch of shaw grisby i went there and fished with shaw grisby whenever i was he come to my fish camp when i was like 10 years old and we followed him around all day man i watched the guy set the hook on three pound bass he reeled down to the water and that three pound bass come flying over his head come off the hook in the middle of the air and went back in on the other side <laughs> i never seen nobody set hook like shaw grisby but anyways, he is an awesome dude. He's actually scheduled to uh, be on our show uh, in the future in February. Yeah, that's sweet. That's awesome. But uh, uh, but how do you prevent? And I know this has probably happened to you or might have not. But and this is a very heavy topic in the YouTube world when filming a fishing video. When do you try to prevent from losing gear on the water? And how do you <laughs> what's some tips for that? OK. Make sure everything floats. Number one tip. Make sure it's tied down. You're talking about gear. You're talking about your YouTube gear, your fishing gear. Your your camera gear. Okay. So yeah. I got a story for you guys that nobody's seen or probably even heard. So I was kayaking with, with this girl and uh, we were going down the river and we had I had my GoPro. I had probably about a thousand dollars worth of rods and reels in the in the boat or in the kayak. And I went to go under a tree, and whenever I went to lean back, that kayak flipped, all of my stuff went in. So we're talking about $1,500 or, or $2,000 worth of stuff. Now, the river was up really high at the time, abnormally high, so the current was really strong. And I dug around. My phone went in, too. My phone was in. Uh, I couldn't find any of it. We went on down the river, and uh, I went and got the bass boat and come back the next day in the bass boat. And I wound up finding everything except my GoPro. So we'll... Um, jigging with Jordan. If you're watching this, come to the little river and find my GoPro for me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I know you just mentioned kayak fishing. Would you do you like kayak fishing better or fishing in a bass boat? Which one do you prefer? Mm, well, the viewers. Okay, it seems like kayak fishing is a larger genre and easier to get viewers and followers with. It's a very big genre, and people search for kayak fishing. Personally, I would rather be in the bass boat. If I'm bass fishing, I want to be in the bass boat. I want to have that foot pedal trolling motor where I can go where I want to. I want to have that, that you know, down imaging in front of me or a fish finder or whatever. 
it's just something about it when you're in a bass boat and you're on that troll motor and you have complete control of you know where you want to cast and you pitch that pocket you know all that stuff doesn't compare to fishing in a kayak now i know a lot of guys you ask this on the kayak guys you know they take getting in the spots you can't get in with a bass boat over you know going with a kayak do you even think about that or you're you know you're just full set on on the whole bass boat i haven't had a whole lot of spots that i can't get into with a bass boat here per se but my cousin told me a story about there was this spot um he, he said his dad took him to um in the bass boat and he said it was basically you would need an airboat to get in there so he said it's what they did they got going about full speed in the bass boat and they went up and he trimmed the motor all the way up and they hit this bump and they jumped over into this other other spot so some of those spots you may be able to get in but uh you know i think that was old three thousand dollar bass boat i couldn't imagine somebody doing that twenty thousand dollar triton no <laughs> This is a this is a question from our viewer. This okay. is from John Dra uh, Jasteremski. I hope I said that right. Um, he said, "How has the Bass Fishing Network Facebook group affected your YouTube viewer increase, video ideas, etc.?" Okay, well, I don't know about um, specifically where my viewers come from, unless they say, "Hey, I come from Bass Fishing Network." But, I mean, I, I upload to a lot of different groups. And it seems like, you know, Bass Fishing Network members are interactive on some of my posts, especially when I post a big bass picture or I ask about, like, a lure or certain questions. So the more that that is interacted with in that group, the more of those people are likely clicking on those links and watching the video. So I would say it's, it's a pretty good part of, um, of helping. It's definitely helped, that's for sure. Um, now let me ask you this as well. When you're when you're thinking about your future YouTube wise, do you try to plan it out or you just go with the flow? What do you mean as far as future? Do you mean in making my next video or is YouTube as a exactly. career? Exactly. Do you just let it come to you or do you try to plan it out and get it done in a in a schedule? Okay, well, my schedule, I try to upload at least a video a week, if not two. I, I would like to upload two. <laughs> Um, sometimes I just don't have time, you know, and I have more work to do during the week errands to run responsibilities. Cause I work a full-time job. I work, right. I'm at work right now. This is in my home. This is, this is work. I hope, I hope you don't see this. I hope you're not watching boss, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, I, I try to upload once or two a week. Now, as far as fishing goes, I just go fishing when I have time. Me and my cousin have a routine of going fishing, um, whenever he doesn't have school on Mondays and Wednesdays because he gets off work uh, in the morning. And then on the weekends, on Saturday and Sunday, I'm normally fishing. So I fish all the days I can and I record everything. And then when I have time, I edit it. But when it comes to saltwater fishing, I normally try to plan those trips um, a week ahead of time. Like I went down to Anna Maria Island in one of my last videos and I planned that trip out, you know, three weeks ahead of time. Luckily the weather cooperated with us. So how many viewers does it take for you to get to where you can make a full-time living on YouTube? Mm, that's a good question. I say I asked a larger YouTuber than myself that one time, um, a guy that, that's – when he was at 30,000 or he was at about 50,000 subscribers, I think I asked him that, and he said generally about 30,000 subs is where people quit their job. I mean, I'll tell you guys what I'm making right now off of it. I'm probably making about $100 a month off of YouTube advertising. Do you have any any advertising before, after, or during any of your videos? What What do you mean? Do I have any advertising? Uh, the little mean? ads that pop up. You know, if you if you go on a Lake Fork guy video, it's twenty minutes mm -hmm. long. You're gonna have ads pop up every six. Okay, minutes got you. I see what you're saying. All right. Um, do I have ads in my videos? Yes. That's how I get the money. Um, now you can choose if the video is longer than 10 minutes, you can choose how many advertisements to put in there, but is that my, is that you? He got busted at work. <laughs> hold, hold on a minute. Okay. That's my colleague. Um, you can choose how many, how many ads to put in there. But the thing about it is when you're a smaller YouTuber like myself, um, the more ads you get in there, the more it hurts you because the less watch time you're going to get. 
So a video for a video to be grabbed by the algorithm, it has to have a, a couple key things. It has to have a high watch time retention. It has to have enough overall watch time, enough views. It has to have enough interaction. So that means interaction is comments, up likes, down likes. If you guys, if, if anybody, if you ever watch a uh, YouTube video and you don't like it, you hit that down button, you're actually helping that guy. So up votes, down votes, any kind of interaction whatsoever on that video helps it. So it has to have enough of all that all together and then it takes off. So you go to put an advertisements in your video, say you put three advertisements within a 10 minute span. That third advertisement comes on. That viewer's kind of interested, but he's not really that interested. He's like, I don't want to watch this ad. I don't video that bad, you know, click off of it. So I would suggest not loading your videos down with ads until you get big. Like look at Black Tip H. He's got, you know, over a million subscribers. He can put, he's got awesome content. He can put, you know, 15 or what, he probably puts like six ads in a 15 minute video or something. But people are going to watch that because they love his stuff. Right. So really, once you're little, if you if you if you're trying to start out, my my advice would be don't worry so much about the money. And if you just worry about having fun, fishing, uploading the content, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And eventually everything else will come. Now, there's a lot of guys that are so worried about the money. Like I got a, I got some friends that are right at a thousand subs, you know, and they're talking about giving up. I would never give up because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy editing it. I enjoy making the videos. You know, I enjoy fishing. And, you know, some of these guys are, they give up right when they're almost there. Well, a thousand subs is the first benchmark for YouTube. So a thousand subs, they monetize you. A thousand subs, um, they start suggesting your channel differently. So YouTube suggests you in suggestive playlists, you know, um, home browsing, People of different size differently. Like whenever I only had, say, 50 subscribers, if you search for Real Jedi, you wouldn't find me. If you search a video by my name, by the video name, like say I have a video, it's called Epic Big Bass Video. You search Epic Big Bass Video, you're not going to find it. But now that I've got 5,000 subs, if you search it, you will find it. So YouTube works against you on that. Okay. Now, we have another view question here for you, and this is from Richard Beal. Long time viewer, guys. Thanks, Richard, for watching. You have watched this from the start, so thanks for the support, by the way. But he is asking, when are we going to see a blooper vid? <laughs> Can you hear me? Are you asking, is he asking me that or is he asking you guys that? No, asking he's asking you me that. that. Oh, well, um, I can, I, I, I know the answer to that. <laughs> You're going to see one soon. So right now, now I've, go ahead. I've got a video the other day I was filming and we was going to set the camera up in a tree so we could have it look like somebody was holding the camera while we're floating out the boat. Well, I had one foot on the tree and one foot in the boat and I went in the water. Well, the camera was rolling the whole time. So you guys will see that soon. <laughs> now, I know we talked about, you know, how you like to plan out, you know, your schedule for your YouTube channel, but for the 2019 season, What's the biggest thing you want to do with your YouTube channel? Hit 30,000 subscribers, quit my job, and start going all over the place fishing. <laughs> there you go. How quick are you? Could you give us an estimate of how far away you are from that? Well, I'm at 5,000 subs right now, but to give you an idea of how quick the YouTube um, scene can change, you know, it took me a year to get to 1,000 subs, and then – within the last then i jumped to i think i jumped from 1000 to 5000 subs within a, a couple months probably about four months so the larger you get it seems the more that the faster that number can grow you know some guys I, i'm watching another guy that had a thousand subs and um he's up at 18k right now and he did that within two months he went from a thousand to 18k in two months so it really just all depends on the channel. I'm hoping to get a 30K this year, though, at least. All righty. Now, would you, is it easier for you to film at a lake or at a pond? Well, it, it really depends. Um, you know, I get exciting in my videos. So, like, let's say if I go to a private pond that is on, 
one of my family members property and their son's sleeping the dogs outside barking i can't really get as excited as i want like if i hook a nine pound bass i gotta be like oh guys i got a bass you know so i really you know, it's kind of hard for me to not be excited when i'm excited you know because i'm excited the dog is barking i honestly i'd rather be on a public lake because it's public i don't care if whoever's watching me yeah no right matter. It's public property. What? Hey, you don't like it? Right. Whatever. Which is, which is uh, in a sense, which provides more content, lake fishing or pond fishing? I would say private pond fishing is going to give you the big bass. If you know some private ponds or you know people, so you can get a membership to private ponds. Um, that's where you're going to get the quality – the easiest quality fish out of it. How many videos do you have total? Um, videos that I've uploaded total on my channel right now is 100. Awesome. Well, Dwayne, you got any more questions for him? I think I'm done, man. All right, we're going to wait two more minutes to get any more viewers' questions in that we haven't got yet, and then we'll go ahead and close it out. All right, you so, guys want you want you guys want to talk about what's working for you right now in that area for bass fishing? Um, yeah. in, in which sense? Well, and I mean, what's catching fish. Yeah, what's catching fish right now for you? I can tell you what's been hot for me. What's hot for you guys? You know, what are you doing specifically to to get the fish? You Dwayne, know, what, you start off because I know what you're going to say. <laughs> jigs already. And big swim baits. Jig, jigs and big swim baits. Yes, sir. What's the water temp like there? 47 degrees. Whew. What kind of swim bait? Like a glide bait or like a, a swim bait or what? A paddle tail no, swim bait? Like a, a big 10 to 12 inch Osprey. Uh, Alabama rigs are working good right now. Okay. Hold on a second. I'll get you one of these swim baits. All right. Uh, cool. While I'm waiting on that. We got a pretty funny question for you here. And it says, the farm pond catching actually count? Does it count? <laughs> Does it count? Well, you you uh, you guys have a lot of tournament fishers in here, apparently, but I get a lot of hate on my live bait videos. A lot of hate. If you go look at them, you'll see, oh, you caught that bass with live bait. Hey, guys, the world record was tied on a big live bluegill. If it counts for the, for the world record, it counts for me. Absolutely. Okay, Did you, let, uh... let, let me see the tail of that thing. The, the tail, the tail of it. Oh, okay, yeah, it's got a paddle tail on it. Gotcha. A paddle and a vortex. That that's what I was thinking because, you know, it's the winter time right now, and it's at the, there. Obviously, the water's below fifty degrees, so the bass have slowed down. Their metabolism has slowed down, and stuff with a tighter wobble. You know, a paddle tail is going to yeah. work better. When you said swim bait, I was thinking the ones that are broke back and that are doing the, you know, what you're well, talking about. I, I have a glide bait turned on tied on back here at all times too yeah he loves that river to see glide bait yeah, that little s waiver man that yeah. s waiver kills them you can do whatever you want with it and whatever water tent. let me see it have you got it tied on yeah i got it tied on i want to see it let me ask you this do you know which which lake was the uh, world record bass caught in uh you you mean the the one tied or the one that was in georgia the one that was in Georgia. I don't. It was a. I think it was a river. I've read that article. Was it, let me know. let me ask you this: Was it in Montgomery Lake? That yeah, that was it. Yep, it was by George Perry, I think. Mm -hmm. George Perry. And then the and then there was the one that was in Lake Biwa in Japan that was yep. twenty two pounds and five ounces. Yep. That's it. There's a big glide bait. Pull up just a, a little bit more or hold it back where I can see the whole thing. Hold it up, up, up a little bit, up, up. Okay, there we go. Okay, gotcha. All right, I'm going to buy one of those. <laughs> Why uh, got his first couple? Yeah, I did. Got that in Tokyo Rig. That dig on Tokyo Rig is going to be nice. That thing is uh, awesome. Have you so tried it yet? I haven't. Tokyo that, rig, what is that? You need to check it out. It's by VMC. They released it at iCast this year. You know how you would touch his rig, a soft plastic? Mm hmm Okay, but imagine 
a steel leader about that far down from your hook, keeping that plastic up above the bottle. It's okay. like a power drop shot. Yep. Got you. I'll look that up. All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed. That's all the uh, questions I got, the Wayne's got, and the viewers got. We hope you had fun, Spencer. We sure did yeah. love having you on the show. Um, and we thank you for being here. And again, guys, make sure you go check out Line Serum. Make sure you go check out Bass Bully Nation. Make sure you go check out Lure Lock. And, and make Real sure you go Jedi. check out Real Jedi. <laughs> All great products. Spencer, like I said, great for having you, man. And uh, we hope great things to come for your channel this season. Thank you.